Mikar and Daf, Mesatis made cut and Daf Yid Al. We begin three lines down at the top of the Amid. But the Gemara continues regarding different things a person is allowed to do on Chalat Shemayim. Shir Kos Pans Bakazik and Cheskel to any time. Dafachem Bishon and Bishon and Bishon and Bishon and Some of the things discussed in today's Daf are we're going to finish the first parak, parak Mashkin Beis Ashlachen. Begin the second parak, parak Mi Shahafach. Some of these are going to include our Chalamayid, where the various Malachas are permitted Chalamayid. It might depend on whether my Sahedid, my Suman, if he performs. The work of an amateur or of a professional, and dover of it, whether he's going to suffer a significant loss. We want to discuss many cases, including basin marker, le gargle, mepasset, building a railing for a roof or a balcony, shoving a stuck in smearing plaster to seal cracks in an oven, mesaknan, fixing broken hinges or sockets, kvashin, to pickle food, and toin curry shayna, beginning to press olives. Regarding certain things, if an oval can perform malacha, or others have to do it, even though Chalamai you're allowed to do that. And that might depend on several factors, including Dover Abed, whether he's going to suffer a significant loss. Inshan Uman Elohu, if he's, there's no other qualified worker other than himself. Im Haya Uman Lurabim, if he had to perform these tasks for the public. And Haya Mukhkarin and Miskarin and Salacherim, Haria Liyasu, that if he's under contract to others from beforehand, that maybe then he would be able to uh, do that act, um, even though he's an Oval. So begin the card, Daf, Daf Yud Aleph, three lines down at the top of the Oven. Rav, Shara Lechia Barashi. Continuing regarding what are you allowed to do regarding Maisa Um and Maisa Hedin and Chalamoid. So, uh, Rav permitted to Chia Barashi, Lamigdal Oihari, to go ahead and uh, weave a, a, a net that you use to catch fish. Because Maisa Hedin, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a DIY, you know, it was not so hard to go ahead and make this uh, net. Even people that don't know technology, you know, they could just, you know, make that net. It wasn't so hard. I will easily. But to go out and make those uh, nets that they trap the birds, that's also that's forbidden in my time. What's, what's the reason? Because my husband, that, that was a professional. You can't just do it. You have to call that uh, that number. Who was the guy again? The contractor. He's he's the guy. You can't do it yourself. So therefore, that's going to be also. Rabbi Huda shot the Amit He permitted to Amit Tanura, which obviously the word Tanur is there. He was the oven maker. Lemigdal Tanuri to go out and make a new oven. Olerava bar Ashvi. He permitted Lemigdal Mahilasa to go out and make a sieve. Now, says Gemara, is that really so? What about Tani? Rabbi Bashmol, Rabbi Bashmol, Torah Brisa says Bashmol. And everyone agrees. She ain't going to Tani. Look at Chalinal initially making an oven on Chal Nemayada. How could he make, let him make a, 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 an oven? Says the Gemara, like Kash, not difficult. Kama Meisachama. Here is in the summer months. In other words, when there's summer months, mean like which Chal is summer? It's Pesach, which is very hot outside and it's not raining. So you're allowed to make an oven because right away it's going to dry up, and you're going to be able to bake bread in that oven That's already. Good. On, matzah. on the matzah, yeah, the bread, exactly, on the on the chalamoy matzah, and kam b'moisik sham, and here we're talking about in the winter months. In other words, when it would rain on the yom, so for example on sukkahs, then you cannot make an oven because it's not going to dry bread right away until after the yom. So then you can be making a tircha shaloy letzarich haregel, and therefore that's not a contradiction. It depends which chalamoy. Can I look at the next mishnah again? Continue. What are you allowed to do on chalamoy? Says the mission, Oisin Ma'aka, you can make a, a small wall, Lagag for a roof, Ula Mir Peset, which I've been corrected many times over the years. I don't know if it's Mar Peset, Mir Peset, so whichever one it is, is uh, basically it's like a, a, a porch, like a balcony that's in front of the upper stories, like Rashi says, for example, on the edge of the river Rhinus, that people have these beautiful porches um, overlooking <coughs> it. So you have to make a you could make, you have to make, and you're allowed to make a chalamayid, a this maka, this small a little wall, but it has to be maisa hadid. It's got to be like a, a common a way the common man would make it. But like my you cannot make it professionally, uh, the, the that railing. Moreover, shafin, you could plaster esa in the cracks in the oven. Umagil and isam and you could roll it with a roller, which you, you roll on the ground of the, of the oven with like a, a big piece of round wood. So to close up the cracks, and you can do this with your hand and your foot. In other words, you take the wood in your hand and you bang it with your hand on the oven to close up the cracks, or you kick with your foot on the ground of the oven. But you cannot use a wood, which is like a foot, that you push it on the, on the clay to close up the cracks, because that's a little bit more professional, more than a roller. Now, however, Hatsir, which is like the, it's like the leg of, of the door. Basically, it's the pivot of the door. That's what sticks in. 
Vahatziner, which is the other half, which is the hole that's by the uh, door socket. Makaira and the beam, which is what's on top of the doorway, which is where the door closes on, that's called the lintel. Vamanel and the lock, Vamaftech and the key. Shanish if any one of these things related to the door breaks. So Masak Mamoid, you can fix it on Chalamoid. As long as you did not intend to have your work done on Chalamoid, meaning you had to fix it really some other day of the year, and you say, oh, Chalamoid, do tzad, canteen. No, can't be what's called Machab Malach You cannot do it deliberately to, to save it for Chalamoid. Another uh, Malacha says the Mishnah, all types of pickling, of brine. In other words, you take fish and other things and you pickle them in salt. Look, if you could eat it on the Yom Tiv, that you won't have to wait to eat it until after the Yom Tiv, meaning because it pickles very quickly and you could eat it right away, then then you can pickle it, but if not, again, it's a Tairuch, Shalei L'Tairuch, and then you wouldn't be able to do that. So the Gemara says, regarding the opening Halacha of our Mishnah, they were said you could make a mock, or you could make a small little uh, railing for the roof and for the balcony. Hey, Chadami, what's this that you said you're allowed to do it if it's a Maisa head? Well, what's considered a common... Uh, man, uh, a man, a regular type, and not a professional. So Yisubama, he says it's behutzim. So when you take the palm tree branches, the daphne and the laurel from a laurel branch, and you make the laurel like the <coughs> types of like the sticks of the wall, and you make like the the, the palm branches like weaving through. That's like a a, a, a fence, but it's like and it's it's a, like a ma'aseh hedy. That's neither the the bright the bright they taught a different case. Tarbit row. You make like a pile of stones. But you don't plaster it. That's like a ma'isa head. And again, that's how. What's the type of wall you allowed to do? But to do professional would not be from minachal Additionally, the mission says shavin is a sadak, and you could plaster the cracks of an oven. Or magil is a magil, and you could roll it with a roller. So like more one does hash to be magil. If you tell me that with a roller, which is a little bit more professional, Amr Shari, you say you allowed to do that. So be out of a So to do it with your hands and your feet, which is not a professional way at all. Maybe do I have to tell you? Of course. So why do you have to say both? So the Gemara says, "Hachem." And this is what the Mishnah was saying. Shaman is a sadakin. You could plaster the cracks. You could not plaster cracks. Yeah, you could plaster the cracks of my gilnais, and you could roll them. Kein my gela, like a roller. So, like Rashi explains, really right. The Mishnah wasn't telling you could use a roller. It's, it's like a roller, biyad regal with your hands and feet. So you could roll with your hands and your feet. Avoloi b'machlatayim, but you cannot use a tool. So, as the Mefarshim explained. Not only Machlatzayim, which is more of a professional tool, but even Magela really you couldn't use. And therefore, you're right. If we would have told you Magela, we don't have to tell you out of Regla. It just means you could use your hands and your feet like a Magela, but again, to use a tool on Chol Shabbat would be forbidden. Why can't you say Loi Zabzu? We don't usually want to say it unless we have to, I think, because it's like... This is pretty... Uh, yeah, I yeah, I yeah. So the Mishnah said, Hatsir the pivot, Vatsinar and the socket, Vakir and the lintel, Vamanul and the lock, Vamaftech and the key, Shlishbur. If any one of these breaks, Masak Mamoid, you can fix it on Chalamoid. It's like Mas, but Amina seems to be contradicting my Mishnah Masak Mamoid. The Mishnah says, Ad Yomam until the days of Yechnon Khan Gadol, Hayapatish Makim Yushlaim, you could hear the, the hammers banging in Yushlaim, Bukhu, etc. on Chalamoid. But he came along and he says, No more. Now, it sounds like Ad Yomam in. Sounds like, yeah, on Patel her days, you, they, people would, would, would bang and fix things, and the locksmiths were open. But from that point on, he was guys, and he says, no more. So obviously, it's forbidden. So how can a Mishnah say, you're allowed to fix the locks and the keys, and you're coming, and the maklop, and the banging, and everything, but he says, Yechlin Kogel was Masak, and that, that you can't do that. It's like, Molikash, well, not difficult. Because Khan bin Anafchi, that, yeah, when did we say that it's a problem, that it's forbidden? was regarding banging the hammer on the anvil, which that makes a lot of noise. That's because I the color, <coughs> makes a lot of noise. We don't want Cholamayit to be a bazillion, so that's what he said is Asr. But Khan, our Mishnah said you can fix these locks and these doors and all these things in Cholamayit, is Bididagari. It's by a carpenter, not by a locksmith, where he makes keys of wood. That's permitted because that doesn't make so much noise. That's permitted to be done. It's not such a zilzal to be done in Cholamayit. But Maskim Rav Chazer, Rav Chazer asked on this interpretation. He says, "What? You remember they're going to say Kol Aser that a, a, a loud, a lot, a lot of noises forbidden. Kol Azutah Shari, but a small noise is permitted. Like people don't know how to be Magdir. What does that mean? That like, we had a party and one guy one was too loud the noise. What? What? What is the decibel level that we? So it would be hard for people to differentiate. How can you say that that's permitted and that's forbidden? Elam Rav Chazer, rather Rav Chazer disagrees and says Umpshat. Says Lekash, it's not difficult because Ha, our Mishnah." 
is bimagoli, is with a large saw, that's permitted, because that doesn't make any noise at all. Habachatzini, but this that we said is, is, is forbidden, was told with an axe, which makes more noise. So it makes noise, really any noise is problematic. I'm not going to say start differentiating like the first Peshat said. No, it's either no noise, that's permitted, or some noise, that would be forbidden. A second interpretation of Papa Ami says, Kan our mission is Kain Gzer, before the Gzer, Yechan Kain Gadol, and therefore it's permitted. Kan Achay Gzer, when we said it's Asr, it was after the Gzer, Yechan Kain Gadol, very simple. <coughs> Third impro- uh, uh, approach, Rabbi Ashi Ami says, How the Mishnah Ami says Shaini, if it says it was Asr, it should be Huda. How our Mishnah says permitted is Rabbi Yesi, who we bring later on the, in the, on, in the parak, I meaning the next parak on Nafid Bezim and Aleph, Rabbi Yesi doesn't require a Shinoi to do anything different for Dov or Ovid, if it's going to be a situation of loss. And our Mishnah permits you to go and do all these things without a shin because you need to have a door, is going like Rabbi Yisi, Dom Rabbi Yisrael Abedimi, he says, Man Tana, who's the one who, to, who's the Tana? That whole shin and b'mayid, b'dom Ovid, that you have to do things differently when it comes to Chalamai, even though it's a, a situation of loss, is the like Rabbi Yisi. <clears throat> so we see Rabbi Yisi is the more lenient, and then he's the one that says, Man, you could clop and you could fix the doors, and the one that says you can't, is like Rabbi Yisrael. Now, Amr Rabbi Yisrael says, Kamam Adlin Ha'idna Kav Yusa De Dasha, who is it that we do like when we when when the the twigs of, of wood are coming out from the beam that's on the opening, meaning from the from the lintel, that it's sticking out and, and the beam is like falling out, and we put it back in, we, we push it with, with nails into the hole, that you're allowed to do that without any changes, who is it like the arminic? Come on, who's that like? Well, you don't have to do any shina, if it's a double oven, you can just fix it in a normal way. Misha said, Kavashin if you could pickle something and it could be eaten on Khalamaid, so Kaishin, then you'll have a pickle. The Gemara brings a story related that Bedisa, which is the name of a river, of Levi, which is the name of a place, which it's interesting, the Bach brings on Ois Aleph, that that's the Girsa of the Alphas, that it's actually Bepumpedisa Labai Kavra, which the Ran explains, Pumpedisa. Pum means the name of a place that's on the river Bedisa. And um, that's like, it's just like uh, Frankfurt on Main, where Pum Padisa, that's the, um, that we're saying of Bedisa. So Pum Padisa, now you know where the name comes from. But either way, there was this uh, river of this town that uh, they had Kavre, which that's what they, um, the river uh, would do that the water would go out and the, uh, they, the, there was fish remaining inside. So, Azal Kuli Alma, so everyone went, and so I see Kavri, they went and brought fish. So, Shadal and Rav, Laminlech Binar, so Rav permitted, which is the halacha of Amesh, we're relating it to, to salt a lot of fish, even though they're obviously not going to be able to eat them all on, on Yom Tiv, because they were salting so many. So, my Bible, I said, well, how could you do this? But now I'm going to say, you can only salt, you can only pickle the fish be able to eat them. But here, so much quantity that they're having, it's to put it away for Nuch Yom Tim, it's not going to be able to fit on Yom Tim. So how can you go ahead, and, and also the type of salt, how you do it, because it's such a long time, they're not going to be able to even eat it. So Malay says, no, keep me a to the since originally when they brought it, their intention was to eat it. So if you shove it, and now, okay, obviously we can't eat it all, but if you can leave it all, it's going to get ruined. So it's going to eat like a double oven, and you can permit it. Right, initially you're not allowed to, but you got it to eat. But uh, I can't eat all this. So then, again, it's like a did a double, it's already principle that you have, and if you're allowed to go ahead and do something to save that. Now, Baker made actually a different version of this story that Charlotte Rubber, actually Rubber permitted, they came to the roof, fired them, and actually permitted them, made some maize lice through in Wimlach. He said, No, we can't, guy, you can go and catch as much fish as you want to, and you could salt it. So this is even a bigger leniency. Amalabai, I said, but we learned. We learned only that if you could, you could only pickle if you could eat it. How are you letting them initially to go out and chop and chop bargain, bargain fish at the rock bottom prices when, 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 when they're not going to, to eat it? <coughs> Amalai says, not true. It says, Hani Nami, you're right. All these fish, even though they're salting it, and they're, they're really salting it really heavy because they want it to last for a long time. Miss Akhli, it could be eaten on the Yom Tiv, Agav Itzitza, where you could squeeze it and you could draw out all the salt from it. Like we find by Shmuel that Abdul Ishit and Itzisi, they actually, for him, they, they, they washed it, they pressed it 60 times, and Ba'achal in the eight. So even though it's being salted and, and it's not edible, it is edible because you could squeeze it out and then you'll be able to eat it. So to Rav, Ikla, Rav went on 
Chalamoid, Lebe Rav Shvir, to the house of Rav Shvir, and Isaac Kamea, who grabbed they brought in front of him a certain fish, which is Tilsa Bishula, a third cooked, Tilsa Milcha, a third salted, and that's what it sounds like from Rashi while we're bringing that, that because since you could squeeze out that salt, so it was considered edible. And but Tilsa Tavia, and the third of it was broiled. So in Tessant, how they ate fish there, it sounds like, you know, for the next event, maybe third cooked, third salted, third broiled. I don't know what that means in different places of the fish or. But uh, that, that's, that's how they served it. And again, you see that you could squeeze out the salt. Now, related discussion, Amr Rav, again from, from Rav, says, Amr Li Adit Sayyad, he says, Adit the hunter told me as follows. He says, Kavra fish, Samach Le close to when it's spoiling, Ali is actually the best. Meaning it's better to eat fish a long time after it was caught, more better than when it was just caught. Which Tracer says, <coughs> sorry, but Bisman Azeh, uh, people, most people consider that as dangerous to eat it when it's close to spoiling. <clears throat> and he says a few of the things we're about to say uh, is not really um, recommended. And he says maybe what's called Nishtan Hateva Kiyadua, that a lot of the uh, treatments that the Gemara talks about are not really helpful in today's times. And maybe that's the reason. Or he says, no, maybe the rivers of bubble were actually better. And therefore, maybe the, the quality was different. And maybe those fish, like in Iceland, maybe would, uh, you could eat it for uh, better when it already, was already went through a day. You left it in your hotel room and maybe it would be better. But, but generally, he says that we don't, we don't really follow what, what uh, Adat Tzayyad told him. But that's what he told him. He says it's better when it's actually about to spoil. Oh, additionally, again, from Amr Rav, he says, Amr Adat Tzayyad, Adat the hunter told me, he says, Kabra, fish, is, which Taisa also says maybe kavra doesn't mean all fish, maybe it means a certain type of fish that's called kavra. So he says, Tavia, you should broil it in, in, the, in, in the brother. Meaning, what's the brother of fish? It's salt, because salt was also comes from the water like fish. So broil it in its brother, asuke bavua, and then <clears throat> after you broiled it, then put it in its father, which is cold water, which is where the fish came from, and mechli bibre, and then eat the fish in its sun, meaning put the fish into brine, which comes out of the fish, which is the sun of the fish, and eat it with it. And ishti alei abu, and then drink its father, meaning drink water, which is where the fish came from, the water, afterwards. So very interesting how uh, intimate the family of the fish is regarding uh, its consumption. Now, Vamar Rav, another teaching that Rav says, Amalei Adet Tziyada, Adet Tziyada, the hunter told me, that after you eat kabra, fish, tachli, cress, which is a certain type of, of, of vegetation, bechalava and milk, so let's in gufa, you should load up the body, meaning after you eat, a person should walk a lot before he goes to sleep, but let put it, don't lay on your bed, and don't go to sleep right away after you eat these things. Another teaching, Vamar Rav, says, Amalei Adet Tziyada, Adet the hunter told me, these three things, kabra, Fish, tachli, cress, v'chalava, and milk, ma'yuvali shikha. Meaning it's better to drink after them water and not beer. And if you have a choice, shikha, v'chalava, then better beer than and not wine. Hanalach, mashkin, v'chalava, which I'll turn to the first paragraph, m'sef, is made cotton, mashkin, v'chalava, which spoke about, like the title of the, the parak regarding watering an irrigated field, one of the heterim of malacha on chalamaid, like we say that opening halacha was regarding double of it, and we had to tell you that it's from a mayan because you're not allowed to do a tirchi yaseira. And then we continue to the second paragraph on Amid Beis, which continues the theme of the same thing regarding what Malachas you're allowed to do in Chalamayid, which is Perak Misha Hafak, which the Mishnah says, Misha Hafak has Zesim. If someone already turned over his olives, what does that mean? He prepared them to put them on the press, which is where you squeeze out the oil. But what happened was, we were evil. <clears throat> and as Rashi explains, this is not related to, we'll see actually, Moikon actually does turn into the Malachas of Avelis. But this is talking about any other day of the year, not not close to a Yom Tiv. And he can't put it onto the press because a mourner is forbidden to do work. So this can be relevant also for the laws of mourning, just as it is as regarding the laws of Cholomite, as the Mishnah actually continues, or Oynes, which, as Rashi points out, this is something else. This is not talking about the laws of mourning anymore. This is talking about, let's say, someone's turned over his olives before the Yom Tiv, and something beyond his control happened, and he couldn't put it into the press to squeeze out the oil, and then, oh, try to Yom Tiv. Oh, let's say he was misled by his workers, where he hired workers to come and do the work for the olive press before the Yom Tov, and uh, they didn't come. So you're not the first one that it happened to. Don't worry, this is a shame from Satan from the Mishnayis that he got um, misled by the workers. So what's the halacha? And it's, it's already Yom Tov now. So it's Chalamayid. So Toyn Kaidu Shaina. 
So the, the first Tana holds that you could load up the first beam, in other words, and you could put it onto the olive press on Chalamoid, and you could squeeze the beam one time. Because if you don't do this, it's going to be a huge loss. So that you could do. But, umanicha, then you have to leave it like that, don't squeeze it anymore, until the Yom Tadet Zerib Yudu. Yisami disagrees, says no. Zoylif, you could pour out the oil, v'goyim, you could finish it, v'gov kedark, you could seal it in a normal way. In other words, you could put it on the olive press, you could squeeze out everything, you could do everything like you like you need to do. Which Tyson points out that this that you allow to seal it is because it's going to be a loss if it goes without a cover. Or you need to cover it because of bugs. But be that as it may, it's necessary, and therefore Bisi says you allowed to do that. Now the Gemara wonders, if you read the Mishnah carefully, it's interesting because Pasach Ba'avu, you open up the first case you said, the guy turned over his olive, and he said that it happened something of mourning. He lost a close relative. Now, if you look at the Mishnah, the Mishnah never told us what the Allah is if you could load up the beam regarding the laws of mourning or not. Because Vesayim B'mayid, it only ended to explain the laws of Chalamayid. It said that if it happens that you have before Yom Tev and the Oynes, or the workers misled you, then you let to load up the first beam, what? B'mayid. That's what it said. <clears throat> so it didn't tell us anything regarding uh, the halacha. I mean, he says you leave it till after the mayid, but you didn't say lacher ha'avelis. So you open up to ma'avelis, but you didn't tell us what the halacha is. You only told us halacha regarding chalamayid. So actually, machlag is what that means. I'm going to have Shisham read the beat. He says, you know what this means? This tells us that things are permitted to be done in Chalamayid, which are these halachas of Mishnah, are sort of been made of like, actually forbidden during the days of mourning. In other words, the reason why we didn't specify it is because you're actually not allowed to load up the beam even the first time in the days of mourning. That's what that first mandama holds. The Bashalmi says, no, he disagrees. He says the opposite. He says, let me buy you come. I didn't have to tell you regarding how bail is. I don't have to tell you regarding the days of mourning where the, there's no prohibition of malacha. It's only been the Dimdrabanan who rabbinically <coughs> that the rabbis don't let you do work on the times of Avelis. And therefore, Vishari, of course, you'll have to go ahead and then therefore load up the first beam. And La Philippamai, no, even on Khalashamai, the Isam Allah Khamid, I said that the prohibition of doing work is biblical, like it says in Shalaiz Khab Gimel. Es Khagamaz is Dishma Shivas, Yam, what do you mean seven days? Yes, yeah, teaching us regarding the whole Yam to be that's Asdu Malacha, at least on some level. So the Makkab said the shirt abundance. So it's in the situation of laws that the rabbi is permitted you go ahead and load up the first beam, but that we have to tell you that. But regarding Avelis, we didn't have to tell you, of course, it's only rabbinic. It's not the and Taira that oval make make nish arbitin. And therefore, that's the we have opposite machlekes regarding what would the halacha be regarding mourning if if we didn't say because yeah, Taq would be also we didn't have to say because we didn't have to. So why did he even start? Uh with, with yeah, why did he mention it it yeah, yeah. Good question. It just says Vidu Abel. I guess he figured that if we're not gonna tell you. Yeah, we're not telling you a hetta, so you're going to know that it's usa, right? Or the other one that says, I don't have to tell you, but I just wanted to tell you that, that this is the case. But of course it's going to be mutter, because I'm telling you the, the, the more severe, for sure you'll know the other one. So if you want to tell you, we have a bride that says, like the one who says, that actually would be usr in the days of mourning. Taka wouldn't be mutter. Because the bride says, these are the things that the, that others are doing them, for the mourner, for the mourner in his, when he's sitting in Shiva. Meaning, but the mourner himself is not allowed to do it. What is the mourner himself not allowed to do, but others could do for him? Is the halacha of Mishnah. Zesu HaFuch, and the olives already turned over, Toyin and Lai. They could put it onto the olive press, and they could squeeze that first beam. But he himself cannot do it. Just like Rav Shesha, who said that even things that are permitted in Chalashamayit are usr, but may have forbidden in his days of mourning. Now, other cases, once we brought this in, is Vekadli and his jug, Loguf to put on, seal the barrel. Upishtani, let's say he has flax, you could, you, these others, the neighbors could do it, Lahalas Manamisha, take it out from where it's soaking. And Bitsamra, his wool, Lahalas Manayer, to take it out from the vat. And the reason why here these people could do it for him is because they would be a situation of loss if he wouldn't do them, which again, Chalamah, you could do it yourself, but in mourning, it's worse, it's more severe, but that's where others could do it for him. So to or my beats him today, they could water his field. If it's Mishra Tegil in the Samayim if it reached the time of his watering, which it, it, there's, they, that was their custom, that each and every one, they would water all the fields in the whole neighborhood. Every person had his day or his week. Therefore, if it's his day or it's his week, the neighbors or whatever, the friends of his could do it for him. But again, he himself cannot do it. That supports Rav Shisha. Now, Rav Yehuda, I may say, absolutely saw the near. They could even plant for him a, a, um, a field that was already plowed. And the Sodom and the And if you have the field, 
that's designated for flax, because if you don't plant it right now, after this period, it's not going to be fit for planting anymore for flax. So therefore, that's when, again, they're also a situation of loss, so his friends could do it for him. Which Amr Lai, the sage said to Rabbi Yehuda, no, you're not allowed to plant a plowed field, and you're not allowed to plant a field for flax. Why? Because it's not a situation of loss the way you're describing. In like tis of a bucket, we don't plant it for the early crop. Okay, tis of awful, plant on the late crop. And then like tis of we don't plant it for flax regarding the other case. Tis of menacha, you plant some other species over there. It's not a, it's not a, a big loss. You could use it for something else. I mean, he says another uh, uh, element. He says, let's say the olives are turned over. The ancient woman, and there's no one that's a professional who knows how to do it but the oval himself. Or let's say Kadi Lager, let's say he has a jug that has to be sealed. The ancient woman, the only professional who knows how to seal it is him. Or let's say Pishton al Hazim na Mishra. Let's say he has his flax has to be taken out of the soak where they soak it. Or the Tamil Hazim na Amina Yer. Or his wool has to be taken out of the vat. Now, the ancient woman, the only professional who knows how to do is him. So then the Allah says, Rabbi Shimon Lil, Harese Yazabitsin. So discreetly, he could then go ahead and do it. And yes, I can, Rabbi Shimon Lil. Even more than this, another hetter, Rabbi Shimon Lil says, is Imhoyumun Rabbi. Let's say he was a professional that was needed by the public. And the safra, and he was a barber, a balan, and he was the 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 the, the, the one who would uh, take care of the bathhouse, and he would serve people, and he would take from everyone them their payments, lot of them for the public. The gears, lot egel, and it comes time for the yomtiv that everyone needs him. Join the mikvah ab and there's un yankel, and everyone needs him for the yomtiv. Ben Shimon Elo, who is the only one that knows how to work the system, Abe has a uval. Harizyasa, so Shimon Elo says yes, he could do it because first of all, situation of loss, and it's also toyich so therefore he could do it. Now, Harisen, the sharecroppers, which a sharecropper is someone who he accepts a field for either half or a third or a quarter of the profits. Vechakidin, which is a different type of contractual agreement, is that he accepts to watch it and to work the field that a certain amount will go to the owner. This and this amount of bundles, a core, or whatever, I'm going to give to you from it. That's Chakira. Then the Vakablan, which is a different type of contractual agreement, is that he accepts to watch it for a certain amount of time with a certain amount that's going to be guaranteed to him, whether it's a lot or a little. So it's like, like the inverse of Chakir. Chakir is like, I'm going to get it. You'll get the owner a certain amount. Or no, Kablan says that it, all the profit's going to go to you, but I'm going to get a certain amount. It's the inverse of, of, of Arisa. No, Arisa is like you're getting a certain amount of the profits, 50% or 33% or 25%. Chakirin is that you're giving the owner a certain amount of bundles, let's say. I don't care how much I make, I'm, I'm taking your field. I'm going to do the work. I'm guaranteeing you a certain amount. Kablan, this is that I get paid for the job. Which one? Chakir uh, is like a tenant. He pays him a certain amount, a specific amount. Yes, yes. Yeah, and Kablan, right. this is the other way around. I get paid a certain amount. I'm going to be your guy. I'll work for you. I'm salary. I'm not, I don't care how much money we make. I'm going to get paid for that job. So, so in such a situation, if this guy's an oval, so other people should do the work for him now however what's if you hire yourself out to other people let's say a chamarin, a donkey driver a, gamal, a camel driver a sapanin, or a sailor so so the individuals should not hire themselves out initially because it's their own work and therefore there is no heter of uh of any work being done on 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 on, on this time that you're not a now but but let's say he was already hired out that he's going to give a certain amount of produce to the owner for the field that he's taking from him. Or let's say him or his animals were already leased out. Eats lacherim by others for a period of a month or two. So then Hadei Eliyasu, then actually they themselves could do it. And they shouldn't lose out all their wages. And also that the owners who hired them shouldn't lose. Which as Rashi points out, here we're not saying it has to be al diacherim because here they themselves were hired out. In contrast to a sharecropper, he could do the work on the ground with someone else. But here himself, he is the donkey driver. We want you. We didn't want anyone else. So therefore then, he's allowed to do it himself. Now if someone, let's say, was a day laborer, who's hard just for the day, and even if he's in another city, which the Chiddush is, that people in that city don't even know he's a mourner, so there's no problem about Mara Zayin, still Ayasa, he shouldn't do the Malacha. Why? So Rashi tells him because he could back out. The Gemara says above a common of the Zayin and Alam, I'm a base, that a worker could back out even in the middle of the day. And Sivra, there is not such a loss. That's how that the Gemara explains over there. And therefore, you'll let it back out, and there is not such a loss, and therefore, then you shouldn't do the Malacha if you were day laborer. Now, let's say um, he had other people's work by him in his house. For example, let's say this person was a tailor, and he had a garment to weave. 
So since it's in his property to finish at a, in his, in, at a later point in time, so then, even though that the contractual agreement was that he said, look, I'm going to do the garment for you and I'm going to weave it for a certain price that I'm charging you no matter how long it takes. So Layasa, he's not allowed to do that in his own house. Says Gemara, I don't understand. Even though it's with Kablanas, what? And I don't have to tell you that if it's not with Kablanas for a set price, that for sure would be us to do? I'll have it to the contrary. Kibaylis, when you're making up with someone to say, look, I'm going to charge you a certain amount of money, flat fee, kididei dummy, in a way, that item is like, is like his, because it's like, I, I'm, it's like I'm basically selling you this thing for a certain price. But if it's not Bukablanas, that means to say, well, I get paid by the hour, so it's not like mine. So then actually, maybe we'd be permitted. So what are you saying? Alpha Bishop be Kibaylis. So he must says, you're right, El Amorad, the wording should be not Alpha Bishop Kibaylis, it's Ben Kibaylis, Ben Sha'in Kibaylis. Because it's not actually even the Kibaylis. The Kiddush is actually more on the Sha'in Kibaylis. Even though it's not even yours, we, we, we understand this to other persons, still the Yasa, since it's in your house, you know, I'll do that work for that other person. Now let's say let's say it was the other way around. Let's say the Oval, he had work by other people to do, meaning he had given something to someone else to fix for him, and and someone else is doing it for him. So if it's Bebesa, if it's in the house of the morning, let's say he had his appliance broke, and it's his that someone else is fixing for him. So Layasu, so the technician should not do that uh, for him on during his Avelis. Because of suspicion, people are going to say he must probably helping out the guy who's doing the work for him and he's doing malacha. Or another approach is that people shouldn't say, oh, uh, during his morning he hired a worker, which again is, is we don't want the Abel to be doing. And therefore, in his own house, he's not allowed to have them do it. But Babay Sachar, yes, let's say his car was by the shop. And it was, uh, his, 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 his relative passed away and he's sitting Shiva, but the car is in the shop. That other person, that technician, could fix his car. It's just what's in his own house. He can't have work, but somewhere else he could. Gemara brings a story that Marian bereid Ravan. The Gemara concludes with the story of Marian, the son of Ravan, and Mar bereid Ravach bereid Ravah. They were partners. They had like a, a pair of oxen, just like a yoke, that they would work together. Meaning one ox was his, one ox was his, and they would be a team of oxen that would plow. Now, Isra ben Milsa, what happened was that uh, the, a situation of mourning happened. He lost a relative. So, Paschal Gamle. So, what he did was, is that he separated his ox from the pier, and he didn't send it to plow in the field because he was a mourner. And a mourner is commanded not to have work done. And even Shvisa Behemtoi, says Rashi, which is Medir that even your animal should not be doing work on, on, during the days of mourning. Now, Amr of Ashi, Ashi says, Gavar Rabbi Kamabre de Ravacha, Avar Achi, a great Samench, a great person like Marbre de Ravacha did such a thing? What was his problem with this? Nehi de Lipsay did the Dele Chaish, although for his own loss he wasn't concerned that obviously it, the land was not working from his ox because he was a mourner, but at the regarding the loss of others, for example, like Marion, who was his partner, Loi Chaish, he wasn't concerned because he wasn't sending his ox, it was causing a loss because now there was no animal to plow. But Vataniel in the Brice, uh, we brought this just before, says if a person was already leased out or contracted out by others, that you should continue doing the work during the, the time of mourning. So, therefore, since it's permitted, like we learned in the Brice, so therefore, what was bothering him was he should have been concerned for the loss of his friend. Because since you could, then you should. Because although for your own loss, you're not concerned, but what's with his loss? It says the Gemara, but who but Marbury Dervacha held. That suffer that Adam Chasav Shami. The singer's personality is different. That, that most definitely that he can't do either one of them. Even though you're right, a regular person could do that because it's a it's a situation of loss and and for sure here that it's a loss of his partner. But a Chasav man shouldn't have his animals being working during his abilities. People hold you to a higher standard and they're going to make be make, make us say, hey, Ruv, uh, uh, trust me, he did work in his abilities. I saw his animal working. So even though it's it's mutter, but he's and therefore he held that, you know, even though his partner is going to lose out, it wasn't appropriate to have his animals working during his abuse. Thank you for any time for hosting us.